By the end of today's video, you will literally know who is going to win the Tour de France, who's going to be on the podium, who's going to be in the top 10, who's going to win each jersey, who's going to win the most stages as well. Pro Cycling Manager is the tool we're going to use today to try and predict what is going to happen at the 2021 Tour de France. Now, I think all of you can agree that Pro Cycling Manager is by far the most realistic simulation of the world of cycling on the market right now. And so what I have done is use the real start list. We have all of the real riders going to the Tour de France this season in game, going to the Tour de France in game. We're using the World DB, so we have all of the latest stats, latest riders, latest transfers, of course. Everything is set up to represent what is happening in the real world of cycling in game. And I've simulated the Tour de France 20 times and we're going to find out exactly what is going to happen on the loop around France over the next three weeks. So first up, let's take a look at who's going to win the most stages across the 2021 Tour de France. Now, 20 simulations mean 420 total stages at the Tour de France and the winner of the most stages, remember we have Van der Poel here, Wout van Aert, Primoz Roglic, Tadej Pogacar, Ala Philippe, but the winner is Caleb Ewan, winning a total of 58 of those 420 stages, making that an average of 2.76 stages per Tour de France. So that is how many stage wins we can expect Caleb Ewan to accumulate at the Tour de France this season, according to Pro Cycling Manager. Between two and a half and three wins, I mean, that is quite something. He won two at the Giro in seven stages, of course. So if he's able to stay to Champs-Élysées, he has a shot, to be fair. I think there are around eight stages that are suited to the pure sprinters at the Tour this year. And Caleb Ewan is going to win the most stages. And coming up second on the list is actually going to be another sprinter. And I was surprised by this because Arnold Demar won 45 total stages, averaging 2.14 across the entire Tour de France. Now, Arnaud Demar isn't a serial winner at the Tour de France. He won four stages at the Giro last year, but really, I guess, taking advantage of no Sam Bennett at the Tour de France. So, Arnaud Demar is the second best sprinter and second most winning rider at the Tour, according to PCM. And just quickly to touch on the main sprinters as well, Tim Malia, he won 15, so an average of 0.7 stages at the Tour. And then we really didn't have any other pure sprinters. Sagan won six, making it 0.28 stages at the Tour for Sagan. Whereas Cavendish won a grand total of three stages. So according to PCM, Mark Cavendish is going to win 0.14 stages at the Tour de France this year. It's not a lot. So uh, if we get that one Cavendish stage win, we need to really, really enjoy it in real life. However, the third most winning rider at the Tour de France was actually Primoz Roglic, 41 wins, averaging just under two stages per Tour de France he entered. So Roglic ahead of Pagacha, Wout van Aert, Matthew Van Spool, and Alaphilippe, who all accumulated at least 10 wins, but nowhere near Primoz Roglic. However, the grand depart from Brest is coming up. I want to know who is going to go into the yellow jersey? Who is going to win that stage one to breast according to PCM? Now, my favourite in real life, I'd probably say Matthew Van Der Poel is going into yellow. That's my opinion. PCM disagrees, would you believe? They're saying that Primoz Roglic and Julian Alaphilippe both have a 15% chance of going into that yellow jersey. Only 15%, but they are the most likely riders, according to PCM, across the 20 simulations I did to win that stage and go into yellow. Other riders that perform well are Tade Pagacha, Alejandro Valverde as well. Wout van Aert only won one of the stages, so a 5% chance for Wout van Aert. And shockingly to me, Matthew van der Poel didn't win a single one of these first stages I simulated. So apparently, my pick to win that stage is not going into the yellow jersey. My next question is who is going to win on Champs-Élysées? The most coveted win, if you're a sprinter, I believe you can have in professional cycling. Now, assuming going off our stage win total results, we'll assume that Caleb Ewan is going to blow everyone away here. But no, Wout van Aert and Mads Pedersen both share a 20% chance of winning 
on Champs Elysees. The two riders didn't accumulate loads of stages across the Tour de France, at least not in the top three. However, both had 20% chance they won four stages across the 20 simulations. Caleb Bjorn was third with a 15% chance of winning on Champs Elysees. And Matthew Van Der Poel, he hasn't had a mention yet, but he won two of those stages to Champs Elysees, meaning he has a 10% chance of winning right there. Now it gets interesting because we are going to look at who is going to win the GC, who's going to be in the top 10 even, and who's going to be on the podium in Paris, according to Pro Cycling Manager. Obviously, we have the two Slovenians, Primoz Roglic and Tadej Pogacar, as the two clear favourites in real life. But can the Ineos Grenadiers really upset that with their strength and depth? They have Carapaz, Thomas Gegenhardt, Richie Port, as we know, Four options for Ineos could even Movistar step onto the top step. Let's take a look. Now, across the 20 simulations, we had 34 total riders that ended up in the top 10 at some point in the Tour de France among them. We have Vincenzo Nibali with a 5% chance of ending in the top 10. I'm not sure that's going to happen in real life. Patrick Conrad was a surprise to me as well. Hazel Serrada picked up a ninth place, so he was in the top 10 on one of those occasions. And so was Jack Haig of Bahrain victorious as well. So a couple of surprises that you may want to look out for at the upcoming tour. Now, a rider I am really keen to watch at the Tour de France is Wout van Aert. We know he can do it all. He looked great on the climbs at the tour last year. He was helping out Primoz Roglic. I think he'll do the same this year. However, according to Pro Cycling Manager, there's a 30% chance he'll be in the top 10, according to Pro Cycling Manager. I mean, it's a fairly high percentage for a rider as big as Van Aert who can sprint to mass sprint victories and TC to wins as well. So there's a 30% chance Wout Van Aert is going to be in the top 10. I'm just saying, guys, it's fairly likely according to PCM. However, when we cut the list down to riders who could finish in the top five of the Tour de France, there are only 20 names left. Now, of course, Pogaccia and Roglic, they are all here. Some of the surprises, Alaphilippe made only one top five, so he only has a 5% chance of finishing in the top five at the Tour de France. We know he came close to yellow a few years ago. For Alaphilippe, there's only a 5% chance that he'll be in the top five, so doesn't look likely he's going to recreate that success he had. Wilco Kelderman is a rider I think could really do well at the Tour de France this year. He didn't claim a single podium across all his endeavours across the simulations, but he was in the top 10, 55% of the time and only in the top five, 15% of the time. So apparently Wilco Kelderman's favourite positions are between 10th and 6th place. He's going to get a top 10, but unlikely to be much higher. Rigoberto Aran is a rider who's really consistent at Grand Tours in real life. And according to PCM, he has a 65% chance of finishing in the top 10. And he does have a 15% chance of finishing on the podium as well. So Rigo Aran could be in for a nice little race coming up which really reflects what I think could happen as well based on his recent Tour de Suisse. But I think it is time, I'm sure you can agree, to look at the Ineos Grenadiers. Four leaders, Thomas, Paul, Gegenhart and Richard Carapaz. Who is the leader though? Who is most likely to challenge the Slovenians according to PCM of the Ineos riders? So I can tell you all four of the riders did achieve a top 10 at some point. Gegenhart 20% of the time, all the way to Richie Port who was in the top 10 60% of the time. Geraint was 55% whereas Carapaz only 40%. And that's interesting to me because I initially had Carapaz down as probably the rider to lead this race for Ineos but again Port is riding well, Garant Thomas is riding well, so it's so hard to call right now. But according to PCM, Port has the highest chance of a top 10, but they're not looking for a top 10. Any of the Grenadiers want to win this tour, so let's take a look at who is on the podium the most for the Ineos Grenadiers. And those riders are Richard Carapaz and Richie Port, who were on the podium in 20% of the simulations each. And that means they are higher than Garrett Thomas at 15%. So Garrett Thomas, only a 15% chance of being on the podium at the upcoming Tour de France. Teo got a podium though, meaning he does have a 5% chance of being on the podium at his first Tour de France. But all four of the Ineos riders do have a chance, according to PCM, of being on the podium at the Tour de France, which to me says how well-rounded this team is and also how many different directions they can go in. 
Briefly looking at Movistar, the team classification monsters. They always go for the team classification, of course. We'll take a look at that very shortly, actually, and see who is going to win the other jerseys. But they did have Miguel Angel Lopez in the top five 30% of the time. Emmerich Mass also at 30% as well. So pretty solid results right there, whereas Valverde was in the top five only 10% of the time. But still, Movistar have three riders who definitely can achieve a top five at this tour. But guys, let's not mess around anymore. Let's get into who is going to win this Tour de France, according to Pro Cycling Manager. And this is going to come down to Pogaccia and Roglic pretty much. I can tell you guys that they both finished in the top five 95% of all simulations. And when it comes to being on the podium, Tadej Pogaccia was on the podium 95% of the time, whereas Roglic was at 90%. So both riders, at least 90% of being on the podium in Paris, which I think you can all agree on, is pretty realistic if you ask me. I can't see many being close to these guys. So both with a huge, huge chance of being on the podium. Who is going to win the Tour de France according to Pro Cycling Manager? I'm not sure. And that is because both Tade Pogaccia and Primoz Roglic have a 50% chance, according to Pro Cycling Manager, of winning the Tour de France across all 20 of the simulations I did. It was either Roglic or Pogaccia taking the win. How crazy is that? The two riders won every single race. Ineos didn't win a single edition of the Tour de France. They only got second and thirds across all of those podiums I mentioned, meaning... This is literally the rematch. This is going to be a battle of Slovenia in France, according to PCM. And there's no separating them either. They both have an equal chance, according to PCM, of winning this race. And I really hope that is the case because we will be on for one hell of a fight. So the data isn't able to split the Slovenians at the top step of the podium. But we do have some other jersey winners. So who is going to go into polka dots? I can tell you guys, I was pretty shocked at this because Wout van Aert is the most likely rider to end up in the polka dot jersey according to Pro Cycling Manager. And let me tell you, it's not even close. Across the 20 simulations I did, Wout van Aert won 55% of the polka dot jerseys available. Over half of the simulations he ended up in the polka dot jersey I will be shocked if he ends up in this jersey in real life, I must say. Other riders who won it, Alaphilippe, Mike Woods, Balka Molema, and Mark Hershey as well. But Wout van Aert was running away with this one. And uh, yeah, Wout van Aert, guys, watch out for him in polka dots, apparently. And when it comes to green, the biggest shock to me is how many of these things Peter Sagan was able to win. The Slovak has won seven green jerseys in real life to this point in his career. According to the simulations... He has a 0% chance of picking up another. He was unable to, at the tour last year, beaten by Sam Bennett in the green jersey. And according to PCM, he has a 0% chance of winning the green jersey this year and adding to those seven he already has. And instead, it's a runaway winner. Caleb Ewan won 11 of the jerseys, making it a 55% chance that Caleb Ewan wins his first points classification at the Tour de France to add to all of those stage wins he is going to pick up. And when it comes to the team classification, it's going to be Movistar. It's not, it's not Movistar. Okay, Movistar did win a few, but only 20% of the simulations did they win the team classification. It's going to be the Ineos Grenadiers. They have a 50% chance of winning the team classification, which let's be honest, if they do, they're gonna win by accident because they want yellow. They do not care about this classification one bit. Whereas Movistar, it makes their season if they win the team classification at the Tour de France. So before this video, I would have told you the battle for yellow is between Tadej Pogacar and Primoz Roglic. And I'm afraid to say that is all I can still tell you. I don't know which one is going to win and hopefully that is what is going to make the Tour de France so enjoyable this season.